if you want to build the uh, the profit in and you like on areas where we don't necessarily know the market, we'll we'll just we'll be absolutely sure. Yeah. Uh, about the offer price. Like we go, we go for a number that we can't screw up. Correct. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, because it's crazy. One thing that we found uh, going national was uh, Maricopa County, we're okay doing 70, 75% minus uh, estimated repairs minus the wholesale fee. Yeah. Right? Like that, that'll that get us to a maximum allowable Which offer. Which is probably at around 65%. You, you end up around 65%, yeah. 60, 60, somewhere, uh, 65, somewhere in there, right? Um, and then uh, using the same formula, tapped into different uh, different markets yeah. that look similar in economy, yeah. look similar in growth to Maricopa County. Um, now, in those areas, though, buyers are buying mm. at 60 percent. Yeah, it depends. So it was like, oh, shit, we're like the stuff that we were locking at 65. Yeah. We couldn't move. So one thing that I do <laughs> that I think it's a little hack and, and not a lot of people do it. What I do, I enter the zip code or the city in, in Redfin. And then at the top of Redfin, it, has, it says, at the top right, it says Market Insights. And I click on that, and it'll tell you how competitive that market is, how much demand it is, and what's the average days on market. Mm. So if I see the days on market are over 90 days, it, I got to offer it 40 cents on the dollar. Yeah. If I see it's 12, 20 days, you hardly see that, but I, I've run across it. You can, you can offer a little bit more. And we got a deal, days on market were like 15 days. Yeah. We sold the deal in two days. What's up? Welcome back to the REI Big Shots podcast, where we talk everything uh, related to real estate wholesaling, real estate investments, uh, the lifestyle of the entrepreneur that's mixed in into the uh, the whole real estate investment world, right? I'm sitting down with my good friend, Victor Heredia here, and uh, we're going to be breaking stuff down for you guys. Uh, we're going to be using the experience that we have um, and the background and trajectory of all the deals that we've done in the past. I mean, combined, and we're talking thousands of deals and uh, and bring it up to you guys, right? So so a lot of times, like the the simplest questions are the things that hold people back uh, from taking the leap into that entre- entrepreneur space, into that real estate space. And uh, and uh, dude, no- nothing sucks more than than seeing talent go to waste because the right information wasn't available, right? So we're gonna be trying to make an attempt to make a dent on that. Uh, if you guys have questions throughout the process, uh, let us know, right? So with that being said, Vic. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, the whole the whole plan for this podcast was to teach people the business. Uh, we know some guys that don't really do deals, and yeah. they're out there teaching people the business. So I talked to Raphael and to Max. I'm like, hey guys, like, like we should we should teach people how it really is, uh, the good and the bad, yeah. and give as much value as as we can, and and help <clears throat> you guys out. Try to get some deals. Maybe we could do some deals together, and, and that's the whole plan behind it. Yeah. Beautiful. So right now we're live on I, uh, on IG, we're live on social, and then if you're catching the podcast on YouTube, uh, make sure that you subscribe, like, and share. Um, th- drop your comments. This is a two-way conversation, right? I, I usually kind of reserve that for the end of the podcast, but but it's a two-way conversation. This is uh, one of those things that can get very technical. I mean, we can go through how-tos. We don't hold anything back, so so take advantage of, of the fact that we're available for you guys here. Um, the topic for today is going to be how to get to your first deal okay so uh, when you think about the rei big shots podcast think about us giving you how to information this is practical information it's stuff that's pragmatic you can apply it uh, we're going to be giving you you know step one step two step three on on, on certain things right and uh, and really just applicable advice that you can take and and actually start doing stuff with it so yeah exactly and and <clears throat> and it's not brain surgery it's not easy, of course, but it's not it's not unattainable. It's or it's not not doable. Um, it just you gotta apply yourself. You gotta apply yourself. You have to believe in yourself. It starts with with uh, your self belief. That's the 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 essence, the beginning of everything. The, and it's it's uh, it's the craziest thing, man. I I used I was one of those guys that you know I'm not launching until I'm ready. Mm. And oh, this is. This is, and I would work on something for you know a month, two months, six months, right? And it's not quite ready, so I'm not I'm not taking the leap yet. And I did that for a while, and then I realized like shit, man, I'm doing a lot of work and not moving the needle at all. Uh, and then it hit me. I realized that like the belief wasn't there. The fear of of the next step was really the thing that was holding me back. Uh, you know, we get to a point where we understand the 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 technicalities, right? The nuts and bolts of something. 
but until we get actually in there and start applying, you know, some of the stuff that we learn, that we hear, that we process, uh, nothing changes. Well, I think th the problem is, and I think you and I are similar in that, and I think you're a little more analytical than I am, but we're, we're both very analytical, I think. Yeah. So you tend to overthink everything, right? Um, but what really helps is, is you know, like watching podcasts, it's like seeing guys that are doing deals, you know, and seeing that, you know, they're human, they're normal, they're regular guys like us. Uh, being around those guys, it makes a difference. And that's what really helped me. I started seeing guys in the business that were yeah. younger than me, um, maybe didn't have as much sales experience as I did. And I'm like, well, shoot, if they can do it, then I could do it. And and yeah. so that's that's the the purpose of this podcast to to get people to just to believe in themselves and and see that it's it's doable. Be it real estate or any other business, it, it begins with self belief and knowing you could do it. At, at the very least, knowing you could figure it out. Yeah, absolutely, and like it, that's that's key right there. Um, it, it's uh, the next step is gonna reveal the the step that comes after it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and the key is that you just you don't overthink it. You want to get a you want to get a basis, a foundation of of the knowledge that's needed. Yeah. But from that point forward, it, you learn by doing. You just got to get out there and just and just do it. All right. So in the spirit of learning by doing, let's talk about how to get to your f to your first deal. I know uh, in previous episodes we we broke down kind of like new lead generation, some of the hot you know lists, and and uh, you know best practices you know on on a few certain things, even some rebuttals. Um, but we haven't really laid out a uh, a call it a checklist of the steps to take or the things to consider to get to your first deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and there's so many ways to get your first deal. Like, there's, and we could go through them one by one, but there's so many. You could reach out to agents, you could go direct to seller, yeah. you could do direct mail, you could do cold calling, you could texting. There's, there's so many different ways, um, but you got to determine, like, who's more likely to sell at a discount. That's where it starts because I think what are we what are we targeting? Maybe two, three percent of, of sellers? Is that what it is? Yeah, at this point it's around three percent. It used to be the percentage used to be higher, right? But, yeah. But uh, but I mean things, market activity changes. So. Yeah. So. But as the economy gets worse, which everyone says, I mean, right now the market is crazy. Like yeah. crypto's bullish, uh, the stock market is bullish, everything's I was shorting the market, you know, four months ago. Now I'm I'm bullish on the market. So it's always changing. But as it gets worse, as the economy gets worse, there's more opportunity. So if right now we're at 3%, it might be at 5 6%, you know, yeah. six months from now. We don't know. It just depends on the economy. Now, if there's a depression, which we haven't had a depression since the 30s, and they say it's, it's cyclical. So it, every 180 years, it should, it should happen again, and it hasn't yeah. happened. But it's possible. But as the, the good thing about our business, as the economy gets worse, our business does better. So um, right now might be a perfect time to get into it. Sounds like a really messed up thing to do, but somebody's going to uh, monetize on that kind of stuff, right? Correct. So and, and we can do one of two things. We can go with the flow and then um, um, do what everybody else does, and, and yeah. that's panic, right? Yeah. Or we can you know, refine our skill sets. We can understand more about the industry we're trying to get into yeah. and, and really capitalize on opportunities because that's what happens. Like uh, opportunity shuts down on one area, but it opens up in something else. Uh, the, the, the thing about um, the space that we're in, specifically wholesaling, I mean, I, I'll address that, but it's that uh, as, as the, the market goes up, I mean, the wholesaling, you know, prices and thresholds and offers, like, they go up as well. And then it comes down, so we adjust to that. So we're kind of, you know, this is, this is the regular market, and then this is us. We're, we're kind of doing this dance, like, together, right? And, and it's not... <clears throat> inventory you know gets tight and 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 things like that like that 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 type of stuff is always going to happen but it doesn't mean that uh people do not have the need to move a property they just can't sell yeah. traditional through tra uh, traditional means right properties messed up they need to relocate there's so many different you know factors that the you know that fall into those into those gaps where they just can't do a transaction like that and that's where we come in yeah well, well the thing to keep in mind that in reality when we're dealing in distressed real estate, you know, which is what all real estate investors do. Like, I don't know any real estate investor that buys a fully remodeled house to sell it. It doesn't right. exist. So we're always focused on, on distressed property. So at the end of the day, you're really looking to solve someone's problem. Um, that's really the key. And, you know, and we're, we're not here to take advantage of people because we're, we're, we're providing a service. We're trying to help people. There's been times when I talk to an older, older lady that's like, you know, in her late 70s or, or 80s, and I'm, man, this, this lady's really jammed up. I try to reach out to her children or to family members to help her out yeah. because 
you know, you can't steal a property from an older lady, right? And one, one, it's it's illegal, but two, it's morally, it's not it's not correct. So we try to we try to help as much as we can. Yeah, man, it becomes a matter of doing the right thing, and and it's interesting because a lot of times we'll 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 be placed in a position where where ethics lead you know lead the direction of the of the deal yeah like and, and that's why you have like there's a stigma against it i think it's it's uh, over over the last couple of years it's, it's somewhat been seen through better eyes you know the yeah. the whole process of wholesaling and and, yeah. and investor you know buyers and and all that stuff because we're i feel like culturally as an industry um, those best practices are getting deployed. Now it sucks. If you talk to somebody who just screwed, blatantly screwed somebody else, yeah. like it, it's like that person will get kicked out of a room. Yeah. It, it didn't used to be that way 10 years ago. You yeah. know what I mean? It was like, exactly. oh, it just, it happens. Yeah. But now it's something that, you know, it's not a cool thing. No, no, no. <laughs> and and uh, so I think the industry is getting, it's getting better. It, it, it's almost like if it was, you know, s- to a degree self-regulation, right? Uh, people who are doing good business, I mean, we, we've seen them last through the years. Uh, and, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Do good business, do the right thing, be a good human being as you're out there, and then follow your process. At the end of the day, like, it, it's, it's, all, it's a very system. It can be a very systematic and process-oriented type of industry that gives you a lot of freedom. Yeah, and actually, as a matter of fact, when you're, you're out to help people, um, there's been times when, we, when it gets kind of slow, we yeah. call our old closed deals. Yeah. And we're like, hey, do you got any other properties or any any friends or family that are looking to, to sell their property? Yeah. Um, and we get deals from that. So uh, it's because we we actually help people. So yeah, I mean, the 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 more ethically you operate, the the better you'll do. And there's some guys that make a lot of money by by screwing people, but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, I want to sleep at night. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. A- anytime I have a, um, I come to a scenario like the one you just mentioned. I mean, I think of my mom, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I think of my family, right? Yeah. And uh, exactly. how would I, how would I like somebody else to treat them if I wasn't in the picture? Yeah. It was just, you know, do the right thing at the yeah. end of the day, right? Exactly. Let's uh, let's get into uh, into the nuts and bolts of uh, of finding or getting to your first deal um, as a wholesaler. Um, give give me your point of view on this, or how would you go about it, and then I'll break down my my side, I guess. Um, but how? What's the fastest way to find your deal, negotiate your deal, and sell your deal? Well, um, so there's some guys that drive for dollars that do well. They just drive a neighborhood. If you see a house that's run down and in horrible shape, yeah. you knock on the door or you get the address and then you skip trace it. You try to reach out to the, to the homeowner. That's a lot of work, uh, but, it, but it does work, right? Yeah. Um, for me, what I did, I started with cold calling. I just pulled a list of distressed uh, sellers. Um, so you could pull foreclosures. Uh, divorce is a great list. Um, absentee out of state owned is a good list and you just call people and say hey are you looking to sell your property and and so that's what i did um were you doing the calling yourself when you got in, started initially or yeah initially have? i was calling myself yeah initially and <clears throat> and you just got to grind it out you just got to just you know and I, I i say this many times to, to people that call me for coaching once in a while um like ray crock the founder of mcdonald's yeah. he, you know he wrote a book did you know he had a book he wrote a book and it's called grind it out because that's really what it comes down to. You got to grind it out. You got to make the calls. You got to talk to people. You got to have conversations. So you just got to grind it out, and uh, eventually you'll get a deal. I mean, that's that's what I did. I mean, I think you would agree with that. A hundred percent. One of my uh, my biggest lessons has been, you know, the hustle is real. Like we have to hustle, right? Hustle is a season. It's not a business strategy, um, but it's gonna get you to that point where you can where you can uh, understand the business. I love I love cold calling. Let me say, let me tell you why I love cold calling. And and, and uh, you know driving for dollars and, and actually door knocking. I mean they work marvelously. Yeah. Uh, I actually have uh, door knocking teams uh, in multiple um, uh, cities throughout the country, so we're we're doing really good on the door knocking side. Um, with that being said, we also cold call. Cold call is another uh, another one of our verticals, and um, and I did get started with um, with uh, cold calling. The the reason I like cold calling is because if you're getting st- like if you're just getting into the industry, um, it's gonna teach you the experience that you need. Uh, to understand the conversations, you're talking to sellers. You're going through this cold calling script, and you don't understand anything, right? About like yeah. how to negotiate a deal, how to uh, you know uh, the, what what the hell is escrow? What, like, you know what I mean? Like they're throwing weird you know questions at you. When you're cold calling, it's the cheapest way to get to a deal and or I'm sorry to a lead and practice yeah. uh, your script, right? When you get, for example, I see a lot of people make the mistake of of um, spending a ton of cash 
on on high quality leads right out of the gate when when the understanding is, is still not there yeah because you're going to burn through those leads yeah yeah ppc for example i mean you have you know and okay i have twenty thirty thousand dollars saved up i'm going to drop a big marketing campaign and get to my first deal next week yeah that's all fine and dandy but if it's you negotiating the deals like what the hell are you going to say right yeah. how are you going to prepare yourself for that negotiation conversation uh you're going to lose the leads so what it does is is when you start cold calling and having those conversations kind of like and and it happens in a similar fashion when you're door knocking because you're having those conversations face to face yeah um, it, it, you're, 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 build, you're creating thicker skin, right? Yeah. Understanding the conversation, understanding the rebuttals. More importantly, you're empathizing and understanding the situations that we come across. Well, actually, and before uh, <clears throat> cold, skip tracing existed, people didn't cold call. People did direct mail and door knocking. And yeah. That's it. I mean, back years ago when I, was, when I got started, I was doing uh, just door knocking. Yeah, that was that's yep. all it was. And then the guys I work for were doing uh, direct mail, but that's all it was. And it worked. I mean, it does. You, here's the thing. You knock on 20 doors a day. You're going to get a deal. Our, I just ran KPIs. Uh, so key performance indicators with my team. Uh, this is an interesting stat. So one out of seven leads that's brought in by our door knocking team turns into a contract. Really? One out of seven, dude. Dude, I'm gonna start door knocking again. That's crazy. <laughs> one out of that seven. That is nuts. I have I have the the numbers to back it up. Because cold calling is like one out of thirty, one out of thirty five leads. Yeah. So so and, and what that means if you're if you're new to a whole lead gen you know space is that you have to generate uh, thirty five you know forty interested quote unquote interested yeah. people to actually get somebody to get, a contract. To get one contract just under contract, yeah. right? Um, so, so out of those and out of those, for example, and this is, this is, I went back, call it 40, 40 leads, um, seven went under contract. Uh, I think we already closed on, we closed on four of them. Three of them are still in the pipeline to get closed. So we're, we're, I'm still kind of, you know, gauging the, the working with the ratios. That's really yeah, good. But it's that's, really good. That's better than <clears throat> PPC. That's better than direct Yeah, it's mail. really good. But it is a lot of work. It is. But that's really good. It's, it's a lot of work. It's coordination. It's, it's understanding how to get to the information quick and everything, right? The point I'm trying to make is that um, people get enamored with, with uh, like, oh, what's the next, you know, sexiest um, uh, lead generation strategy? Oh, yeah. shit, let's use AI. Yeah. AI is, is, is it's like, it's, it's okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, but if you go back to the drawing board, like, and, yeah. and you're getting started in the, in the business, you're either going to have to you know, bootstrap it and put the time in, mm -hmm. you know, elbow grease and, yeah. and actually go through the process, which I highly, 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 actually don't do anything else. Go through the process, even if you have the cash, um, because you have to, we, you have to build yourself up. Yeah. Right. For, for those opportunities that are going to, that are going to come at you. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, but, but also it's easy to get lost in all the noise, right. Of yeah. the, okay, I'm going to drop, you know, seven different types of, of, of verticals on, on lead generation and then, uh, you know, become a millionaire. Well, it, well, so. It's funny that you mentioned about get lost of the noise or you just overthink it. Cause there's been quite a few guys that hit me up and they're like, Hey man, you know, younger guys, they're like, or even older guys are like, Hey, I want to work with you. You know, you know, let me know, you know, teach me what you do. Yeah. You know, I, I want to <clears> get deals, you know, we'll do a split, whatever. And so a lot of guys, if, if someone, you know, wants to work with me, I'll do like a 50, 50 split. I'll teach them the business and like, Hey, if you get a deal, we'll go 50, 50. And you have a lot of experience, man. Oh, thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you. That, and is that offer is out there? Yeah. Oh yeah. So and 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 really, what <laughs> you got? You got a mic problem there? Yeah, I did. I pushed the button. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so w I do that, but I, a lot of times, like I give the guys a list. I'm like, this is this is yeah. what you do. This is what I do. I did. And there's a, there's a couple guys that were like, I'm like, man, this guy's gonna kill it. Yeah. He's gonna do amazing. This guy was maybe like 19 years old, super aggressive. He was actually a competitive swimmer. And athletes tend to do well. Just so you know, athletes do really well because they're competitive, right? You got to be yeah. competitive and aggressive. Yep. And next thing you know, bro, he just, he wouldn't make the calls. I, I'm, I was looking at his dialer and he was calling like 45 hours or 40, 45 minutes a week. I'm um, like, I'm like, dude, you're not going to get deals if you're not making the calls. And so, yeah, you get lost in the noise. Like, and I, I an, called an, 20 people last week and, and, and nobody, an, nobody and sold me their house. An, another guy that I like a lot, I'm, I'm work, actually working with him. I'm trying to, to, yeah. to coach him. He's like, hey, what do you think of the web form? How's the web form look? And, and how does this look? And hey, you know, on the script, 
you know, what if the seller says this? What should my cold caller say? Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're you're way overthinking it. Just make the calls, yeah. talk to sellers, you know, build rapport, try to get them to sell. Like, yeah, they get lost in the noise of all the. And so me, I would just focus on having conversations. Yeah. I'm like, how do I get a deal? Have a conversation. Yeah, that's it. It, 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 that's that's it. That's what what gets you deals. A hundred percent, absolutely agree. So so step number one, if you're getting started, there's a couple of uh, you know there's multiple strategies to find your sellers, right? You're looking for a motivated seller. That can be a distressed property. The situation can be distressed, right? Sometimes you can't see the distress because they're going through a divorce. Uh, they're going to through a business re- uh, or uh, they're relocated at, at you know at work or maybe somebody passed and now it's a probate situation, but the house is in tip top shape. Um, so there, there's there's different uh, points of distress, right? At the end of the day, you're looking for a distressed seller, and um, and when you're able to find that through uh, lists that you can buy uh, through different services, you can skip trace, like for example, Big Service, um, and uh, and find the phone numbers and hit them up, right? Like that's one way of doing it. You can create lists also uh, of properties that you can go out and door knock. I mean, if you're looking at pre foreclosure type of stuff. Uh, 60 day late. Uh, I mean, that's another really good list. So there's different uh, verticals, different sources where you can find all those lists. Now, that's the step one, right? Having a, a set of records, call them records. And I, I do not recommend going, you know, straight into PPC and, and, and the most expensive routes. Or direct mail. Or, or yeah, yeah. It, it's right out of the gate. It's just, it, it's going to b- b- uh, break your bank. It's going to break your bank, yeah. It's going to break yeah. your bank. And, yeah. unless, it, unless on direct mail, <laughs> it's a super small. And super, I mean, it costs you 40 cents per mailer. So yeah. if it's super niche, you could test with it. But, you know, for starters, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Um, and, and again, the idea is if you, when you're getting started to get into it and then have enough reps, right? Get confident with the conversations. Understand the rebuttals. Understand the, uh, the ins and outs. Understand the types of solutions that you can bring. All right. So that's uh, step number one. Step number two is going to be the actual uh, conversation with the seller. Uh, and uh, you find you find a lead, uh, they're interested in an offer. Okay, now you take that to the next level, right? And you start negotiating. You start looking at uh, comparable properties uh, to the one they have, the one they're they're looking at selling. So in the market, how much are those properties worth? How much are they going for? Um, there's a handful of things that you can look at if you're running comps and and running comps is not that difficult they feel like a lot of people just yeah get, get the so people overthink it even even yeah. my acquisition guys uh, you know we got like six guys you know working with us on acquisitions they tend to overthink it or yeah. they did so the quick and easy guys two things happen either you run the comps it takes you too long to to figure it out and you get lost and then some guys they'll they'll lock up a deal at 95 percent of value yeah so and then they say like, hey, Vic, I got this deal. I'm like, that's not a deal. Like, there's no equity because yeah. you, you got to factor in typically seven percent closing cost. You got to factor in the remodel cost and then you got to f- factor in the, the buyer profit and then your assignment fee. So it adds up. Right? right. So the quick and easy. What I tell my guys is say, listen, get Redfin, get Zillow, t- add them up, get the average of the two. You want to be at 70 cents, 65 cents on the dollar below that. That's, that's where you want to be at. You want 30, 30 35% equity on that deal. So if a, if a house is worth 100000 on Redfin, you want to get at 65000 So that's a good number that I use just to be safe. It's not always accurate, but when you're starting, to me, that's, that's just an easy way of, of going about it. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I think, I mean, I think you're spot on, right? If you want to build the, uh, the profit in and you like on areas where we don't necessarily know the market, we'll, we'll, just, we'll be absolutely sure. Yeah, uh, about the offer price. Like we go, we go for a number that we can't screw up. Correct. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, because it's crazy. One thing that we found uh, going national was uh, Maricopa County. We're okay doing 70, 75 percent minus uh, estimated repairs minus the wholesale fee. Yeah. Right. Like that. That'll get us to a maximum allowable. Which offer. is probably at around sixty five percent. You end up around sixty five percent, sixty six, somewhere uh, sixty five, somewhere in there, right? Um, and then uh, using the same formula, it tapped into different uh, different markets yeah. that look similar in economy, yeah. look similar in growth to Maricopa County. Um, now, in those areas, though, buyers are buying mm. at 60 percent. Yeah, it depends. So it's like, oh, shit, we're like the stuff that we were locking at 65. Yeah. We couldn't move. So one thing that I do <laughs> that I think it's a little hack and, and not a lot of people do it. What I do, I enter the zip code or the city in, in Redfin. And then at the top of Redfin, 
it, has, it says at the top right, it says market insights. And I click on that and it'll tell you how competitive that market is, how much demand it is, and what's the average days on market. Mm. So if I see the days on market are over 90 days, it, I got to offer it 40 cents on the dollar. Yeah. If I see it's 12, 20 days, you hardly see that, but I, I've run across it. You can, you can offer a little bit more. And we got a deal, days on market were like 15 days. Yeah. We sold the deal in two days. Wow. So, uh, so that's a little hack that not a lot of people talk about that I think, you know, everyone should use. That's huge. Uh, guys, guys, if you're listening, like you, I hope you wrote that down. If not, go back and then rewatch it because it's important. Um, days on market uh, for, for those who are getting started, it's, it's how long does it take for a property to sell after a seller puts it on the marketing listing service or, or um, MLS, right? Yeah. A multiple listing service. Yeah, and also not to interrupt you, but <coughs> these aren't um, set in stone. Like some investors that have yeah. been doing it for 20 years are like, oh, no, that's not right. This is like just a quick and easy. Yeah. Like, so that's what we do. And then when I underwrite the deal, then I'll go really deep into the comps. But initially, right. just quick and easy. You just want to make offers and, and get in the door. Yeah. So absolutely do that. I, I you know, I haven't done done that approach from Redfin. Yeah. I'm going to take that. Yeah, it, it really works really well. It gives yeah. you really good insight into, into the, the market. We're always, we're always looking at, at days on market. I mean, as far yeah. as, you know, for the but speed. But Redfin is an is a easy access. Yeah, it's easy it access. Right you don't away. have to pay for it. it. It's just easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, we use PropStream for for a lot of the data that we're looking at when yeah. it comes to comping. And so so of. our acquisitions team uses Redfin and Zillow. Um, and then if they're like on the cusp of, okay, the, the guy wants to sell it to deal, yeah. then we'll dig into prop stream. Yeah. Uh, there's some guys I know, uh, Brandon that works with Nick Perry. Uh, they just use Zillow exclusively. And that's really good too. Cause on Zillow, you can look at the four sales and the solds yeah. and that it gives you a really good idea as well. But, but for comping just quick and easy, Zillow, Redfin, average it out. I think average that's, that's easy. No, on point. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But also too, one thing that we didn't mention when you <laughs> are talking to sellers, um, we try to do what's called the PASS system. That was uh, created by uh, Dan Kennedy. So it's, it's PASS is pain, agitate, solve. So you want to find out the pain, then you want to agitate the pain. How do you do that? You ask questions about it. Like, well, and how does that make you feel? How has that affected your family? You know, you just, you agitate it by asking questions about that situation. And then the S is for solve. Then you solve the problem. So if you could keep that form in your mind, PASS, pain, agitate, solve, that's when you'll start getting more deals. And, and Alex Sine said it really well. Uh, he was struggling to get deals when he started. And I remember he said, when I stopped focusing on getting the deal and started focusing on helping the seller is when I started to get deals. Yeah. So I think that's a really critical, critical part that you got you to gotta solve problems. You got to help people. Let me dig in a little deeper into that one. Um, it's <clears throat> It may feel like it's, it's uh, oh, no, like, I'm, I'm kind of stabbing a pain that they already have, and it may feel wrong, right? Um, but it, it's really not. A lot of times, like, we have to have, we, we are the expert when we're coming to them, right? And it doesn't matter if you've been in the business for a month, right? You, you're going to know a lot more than they do, uh, for the most part, about the real estate market, about the properties, about the solutions that you can present to the, you know, bring to the table. So, so it's, a lot of times, it, it's, it's invigorating that conversation so, so you get emotion out of it because sellers, I mean, we see that in, in pre-foreclosure situations all the time. Yeah. Sellers are in denial. They're, they're, they're in denial. They're not, you know, accepting the reality that, you know, they're going to get kicked out of the property in a few months. Or, I mean, sometimes, I mean, they wait until the end, right? We get there and then the, the trustee sale is in a day or two. Well, I had a guy call me. So we have uh, to scramble. Yeah. guy called me yesterday. He said, it's going to auction tomorrow. Can you do anything? And, and. Sometimes you can, right? Sometimes. But this one, it didn't have, didn't have enough equity. It just yeah. it wasn't a deal for us. Um, and he, he's like, hey, uh, what do I do now? And I'm like, well, you know, it's too late, yeah. but, but I give him some tips. Yeah. But yeah, some, some people are just, uh, they're in denial. And, and that's the thing. Like when we, don't, when we don't help them see the emotion behind it through the conversation, a lot of times they can, they can roll through that timeline that they have. And the, the more they, they wait, the less options they have. Um, Correct. You know, and of course, like it de it's depending on the situation. Right. But a lot of times, like people are, are not willing to see what's what's right in front of them. And that's what we do through the conversation. So don't feel like you're being, you know, uh, sketchy or, or whatever, or ma manipulative, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we're we're there to have a conversation that maybe the relatives or loved ones yeah. are not having with them. It's got to be an open, transparent and honest conversation with them. Yeah. And also too, the another thing that, that <coughs> I, I tell my team is 
there's the red personalities, the guys that are just yeah. bottom line, give me the price, you know, be done with it, stop wasting my time. But there's some people that are really passive and yeah. they, they kind of put their head in sand and you, those you kind of need to hold their hand. Yeah. You need to tell them, hey, listen, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. Uh, now, can you take advantage of someone that way? Yeah, you can, but that's why you want to be ethical. So what we tell them, hey, listen, the reality is this is what's going to happen if you don't, if you don't move forward. And uh, normally they, you know, they decide to move forward if you, you instruct them. Yeah. So that's, that's a key to it. A lot of it depends on the personality as well. Yeah. Um, so so with, that, with that being said, right, consider that. And then um, one thing that we go off of to, to just kind of, I call it a discovery conversation, right, when we're having that negotiation talk before the numbers hit. This is before you, you're presenting any, any numbers to the sellers. At this point, you looked a little bit at the property, not necessarily have, you know, you, you didn't spend, you know, an hour, half an hour running comps and looking at all the details before calling the seller. Don't do that. Wait until you're actually having a conversation and then you see that there's something there. Otherwise, it's going to take you, you know, a, a year to go th through 30 records. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. I forgot. Someone it's, told it's, me. It's, it's the number one time waster. Yeah, yeah, somebody told me. I forgot who it was. I can't remember. I'll, re I'll try to remember. They told me that the acquisition managers that do the best are the ones that are the most pr uh, computer proficient yeah. because they could run comps faster. Yeah. I was like, really? Like, wow, that's interesting. I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. You know, it's speed with the computer. You, I, in my in my CRM, um, the the I, the one I built, it's uh, I have a button in there that I, I click it and it just cross references a bunch of APIs and it spits out an ARB. So when I'm when when I'm on the phone or my team's on the phone with them, they click on that button, pulls up info and then pulls up an ARV and then right below it, it has multiple um, uh, rows of formulas. Oh, and it'll cool. spit out the the number. Is that in Podio? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. cool. That's really it, cool. It'll spit out the number, for, like the for yeah. example, or maximum allowable offer based yeah. off of those, right? So it gives them really quick preliminary numbers. Yeah. But based on the conversation they're having, like they're okay, they can they can go off of that. And if it's a real thing to send out a contract and get signatures on it, I I, I require them to put eyes on it. Yeah. So then to. they they actually go in there and then they look at you know real comps and we can do a whole episode on comps. Yeah, because you could get a deal. Yeah. At, you know, 50 cents on the dollar. But if days on market are 220 days. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's a dead zone. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, 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 yeah, I mean, that's important, right? Not, not getting bogged down with, with uh, all the, the legwork of a deal before you actually know you have, you know, something in the works. Yeah, the, the, not to interrupt, but the critical part is first just build, report, start a conversation. Right. That's, that's the critical part. Right. Um, and then uh, part of the conversation, I, I like to break it down in, into the condition, the timeline, the motivation, and the price. So think about those four factors, right? We call them four pillars. Um, so the condition of the house, you can go into, you know, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, the condition of the property? This is when you have them on the phone. And what it is, I mean, that's a very shallow type of question. It's easy to get to. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's, it's a really good opener for, for just conversation. So you're, it's not that you're doing a checklist, on the other side of the phone, uh, now you're listening to tonality. They're opening up. They have to be doing at least seventy percent of the talking. Like, do like if you're doing seventy percent of the talking, you, you're running. You're that, talking too you, much. You're talking too much. Um, so, so let them elaborate, right? Uh, Open-ended questions. I mean, there's different ways of, of having these conversations that uh, that allow you to discover and kind of read between the lines as you go. So the first, the first pillar for us, is, it's always condition. Um, because it's easy. It's easy to get to the condition. It's not very personal, right? And as you start getting into it, the next thing um, is it's a timeline. So the, uh, the, you know, how soon would you like to have, you know, the money in the bank or how soon would you like to get paid on this, right? It opens up, and, and, but... Now, why is that critical? Because you went over it really fast. Why is that critical? Yeah, so the timeline? Yeah, the, the, the you know, how, yeah, how soon you want to sell, how okay. you, you know, So that's paid. critical because it's going to, if you're reading between the lines, it's going to tell you the urgency behind it. So if they say, oh, I, I mean, I have no, I mean, no rush to sell. Um, right. But they say something else down the road that, you know, they have, oh, I got to I got to make a payment or, you know, something mm -hmm. that's going to be liquidated next week that conflicts with that, you know, with that yeah. thing. You're going to be able to see a couple of diff uh, different, you know, points um, in the conversation that tell you yeah. right insights. So, yeah, so, so for me, timeline is the most the, the number one way to know the motivation. Yeah. Yeah. So so timeline is is it, and it's important. Right. Uh, 
30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you know, what kind of, what kind of, uh, if they say, oh, I'm in no rush to sell. And then when you ask them, how soon would you like to get paid on this? And they say, as soon as possible. Like there's something there, yeah. right? And it happens all yeah, the time. Yeah, totally. And then uh, the follow up to that is like, um, what are you going to do with the money when you sell anyways? Because yeah. then now you're painting the picture of them closing the deal. So right. now you've already like, you put the seed is like, hey, we're going to close on your property. So then they're like, oh, shoot, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So now right. they, they start getting excited. So to recap on those two, you start with condition, you move on to the timeline, then we talk about the motivation. Um, and usually the segue to that motivation you know, portion of the convo is, is I mean, man, it, it, it sounds like based on the condition, uh, the, the property's in pretty decent shape. I'm looking at uh, uh, you know, some of the pictures here online and whatnot. Uh, have you tried listing it? And this is something that we do. There's, it's it's kind of like a, a love or hate type of strategy. Uh, but I always ask. I always have my team ask. Have you tried listing on the ML on the MLS? It's gonna come up as a as a uh, rebuttal down the road. Guarantee you that much. Um, and then um, they, you know, they'll say, uh, you know, no because of whatever, right? Or or yes, and it didn't sell, or you, what, you know, whatever the answer is. But we always put it in front of them. And we let them know, this is the segue to the motivation. We let them know that we can't pay retail for the property. We're investors. I mean, you're going to make more money if you go down the MLS route. You may have to fix it and, you know, some stuff, repair some, you know, things on there and then go through the inspections and appraisals and all that stuff. But you may end up making a little bit more money. So, so if you don't mind me asking, what, what's the reason why you're not, uh, you know, putting this up with a traditional uh, real estate agent? Um, and uh, they'll open up about that, right? That's going to give you segue into that motivation portion. Oh, yeah, like it does make a difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not always a fan of that, but sometimes it's, it, it, I agree. We do use it because then you know what, like, what's really going on. Yeah. Like, it, if they don't want to give us a lot of information, if they're really like short and they're yeah. like, just make me an offer, and give me an offer, and then we'll be like, well, hey, have you tried to listen on MLS? Because yeah. then you'll get to the root of the problem. Yeah. And when uh, when we're being rushed. Um, We'll, we'll look at numbers and, you know, the, the price is the final thing, right? But we'll look at numbers and it's like, oh, uh, man, and we can't get a number out of them. Yeah. You know, I do have a number for you, but I, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if it's going to make sense. We would have to be, uh, and then we pull back from that. It's like, mm, you'll probably end up making more if you, if you list on the MLS. Yeah. Let me just say that. How much are you looking for? And we just kind of, you know, yeah. pick on that for a little bit, kind of hang on it. Yeah. And, uh, and then we drop the, uh, we drop yeah. the, the low anchor. If right? someone doesn't give us a price, we don't give an off a, price, a price or an offer initially. What we'll do, I'm like, well, let me take a look. Like, listen, from what I'm seeing, cash sales in the area, they're going for 110, 120, yeah. 130, whatever, whatever we could find, right? You know, that's what, what we're seeing. And they're, they're like, oh, that's too low. I'm like, well, no, I'm not saying that's what we're going to offer you. Yeah. That's what I'm it's seeing. great soft pass. That's what I'm seeing. On the cash sales. Now, here's a little another little hack. One way to find the low sales is you go to Zillow, and then you go to Solds, and then let's say the ARV in that area is 300, 350. You do a you do a and in Zillow it gives you max price. Yeah. So we enter the zip code and you you the max price you enter 150, because then it'll give you all the properties that sold under 150 thousand yeah. dollars. So then we'll be like, well, listen. One two three Main Street sold for one forty five, four five six Main Street sold for one sixty five, or whatever one thirty five, whatever. And so now you got a whole list of properties that sold over one fifth uh, under one fifty. That helps you to negotiate the price. So that's another little yeah. hack that we do as well. Yeah, exactly. You're creating that range for for the comps. Correct. Um, so we do we do that right, and then um, uh, as we're going through the in motivation conversation, I mean you can't script that. I mean it's it's a two way. Yeah, two way combo. I mean, we get we get into it, right? That's just rapport. Yeah, it's rapport it's building. Rapport. It's really where where and this is crazy about like this is this is crazy about rapport, right? People think that um, that if somebody spends a lot of time talking to you uh, and and they you know they share I don't know so you know the insights of a football game, you have great rapport, right? But it, it's it's really not. Something happens. That I love face to face appointments because you, you can read body language, right? But but um. When when you have and, and you can you can listen for this as well if you're doing uh, calls over the phone. Um, when people start mirroring you, when people start mimicking, for example, if you're nodding, you're saying yes, yes on the phone, yeah, mm, 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 and then they start doing the same thing on their side of the line, right? 
they're mirroring you at that yeah. point you have you have a subconscious connection where you're you're both on the same plane yeah 100 percent. chris voss is huge on that yeah, yeah. I, I mean it, it's it's a real thing it happens so so report building like it's don't get tricked right tell, uh, sellers will lie to you they'll tell you you know a thousand great things and then you feel like you're going to come back the next morning for the contract and yeah. then they start ghosting you like that shit happens all the time yeah, it's exactly. just you know nature of the beast yeah. so so you start getting better at understanding cues and understanding you know, uh, you know, little things like that that allow you to move, uh, you know, a step closer to that to that closing. So as you're going through that motivation um, and understanding what the real pain points are, get your mind off of the uh, the the offer. Get your mind off of that deal. Like, think about how can I solve that problem? Do I know people if they need to move and they're you know too old, they have you know junkers on the backyard or whatever, and they don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do I have people in my power network? in my circle, right? That can come in and help me out. I mean, can I assist them with that? Am I going to provide them yeah. a, a service or a benefit that somebody yeah. else is not willing to go, you know, the extra mile for? Well, well, many times the rebuttal is telling you what you need to do. Yeah. A lot of times they say, well, the thing is, you know, I have to move everything out and put it in storage. Yeah. Well, you know, we can do that for you. Yeah. We've done that for them. Um, oh, you know what? I just, it's so much stuff. I need someone to help me move. Well, yeah. we can we can hire the movers for you. We can do that for you. Now, that's not a problem. You know, we do it all the time. Very nonchalant. We do it all the time. So a lot of times the 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 objection, I'm sorry, the yeah. objection they give you, it really is a solution. Like a lot of times you if, if you just hone in on that objection and you twist that, you 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 flip it and you make that your solution, yeah. that's really what it takes to get the deal. Yeah. So sometimes your objections are 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 the friends, are yeah. your friend. Yeah, absolutely, man. Great, great point. Um, and then the last thing that we get to is the price, right? This is the very yeah. last thing that we ask for. This yeah. is, you know, how much are they looking to, uh, to get for the property? Yeah. What are your thoughts on the sales price? Yeah. Um, and there's so many different ways of phrasing that, right? Um, one of them um, th that, you know, we've used over a long time. So if we were to cut two checks, one for the, uh, for the balance of the mortgage of the property and one for you, uh, what would they have to be? You know, yeah, that's that's the that's what we try to do. We're like, well, hey, listen, yeah. after everything is said and done, after we pay everything off, how much do you want in your pocket? Yeah, because then they're going to tell you exactly what it is. And then all you got to do is reverse engineer that. Yeah. And that's really that's how you get the best deals. Yeah. Go back from uh, whatever they want in their pocket and get close to it if you can. Yeah. To the mortgage balance and, and that sort of thing. Exactly. So, exactly. So condition, timeline, motivation and price is going to give you the whole breakdown of that discovery conversation. Yeah, that's all it takes. Um, but throughout that whole process, it's all about rapport. Rapport, rapport, yeah. rapport. It's, and and the best way to build rapport is just listen to someone. Uh, you want to mirror them as well. You want to repeat what they say. Yeah. Uh, you want to repeat their name. Um, and you just want to make it clear that you're here to help. Yeah, those are cues, right? And, and, uh, and really what they are, they're, they're cues to people. People relate to people like themselves. OK, so, oh, man, I, I can connect with somebody at, uh, you know, I understand this person gets me. Right. And really, we have to be authentic. It's not about faking the the, uh, you know, the, the caring or the um, the empathy because people smell bullshit a mile away. Yeah. So so that will come across, too. It's going to come across in your energy It's going to come, uh, come across in in, in uh, just the way that you operate. I mean, some you know, some people are just sleazy. And, and you can smell that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Oh, I'll talk, I mean, most, yeah. not most, but many people, are, they're going to lie. Yeah. They're not going to tell you the truth. Like, how many times are you like, hey, the, prop, the property just needs a little bit of work. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, a shit show. You, you walk in, it's missing a kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you get that all the time. So, you know, this yeah. problem, it, it comes down to, it's going to be about solving problems. Yeah. You're going to have problems with uh, sellers, with buyers. It's, it's the more problems you could solve, and the more you can handle stress, the more money you're going to make. 100%. Um, what's your, so now you have that, you have that conversation, you had a great, uh, you know, combo with the, with the seller. Now you guys are best friends. You know all the teams that they like. They know all the teams that you like. Uh, you've seen pictures of their family, and you guys have great rapport. You get the contract signed. Now you send it over to escrow. That's uh, the last, you know, stage, right? Selling the deal. Uh, say, uh, open escrow on it, and then you start finding a buyer for it. What's your go-to um, dispo or finding a buyer strategy? So we do two things. Uh, so number one, I'll, if it's in, in the city, I'm going to look in prop stream. I'm going to look for the biggest buyers in town. Yeah. So I'm going to look for uh, absentee cash buyers in the last year that own over 20, 30 properties. 
because those are those are your buy and hold guys. So um, I've done it many many times, and it's, it's one of the best ways to uh, to find the big the big buyers, um, and then reach out to them. Got to skip trace it, and then the other one is I just enter the property they have under contract. I enter it in um, in Zillow, and I look at the for sales. And then you can see all the four sales and, or the, I'm sorry, the four rents, excuse me, the four rents, the four rents are landlords. So then I start calling the, all the four rents is like, Hey, I, listen, I see you have a property for rent. Are you looking to buy more properties? I have one in the, in, in that zip code. So that's worked really well for us. Uh, and then lastly, and, and what we do all the time, you know, we use investor lift. Investor lift is a great tool, um, for dispositions, uh, between those three, you really can't go wrong. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's gonna be demand, right, for a certain type of property. Sometimes you'll get a niche, uh, you know, property, something that's that's not ne- necessarily, you know, the the typical stuff that most you know buyers buy. But still, like, there's there's alternate ways of finding buyers. Um, one of us for us, and I think it's similar to the one that you're running. Like one of our go tos on day one of marketing, we'll roll out a five mile radius. So we'll pull out a five mile radius of cash buyers, and and we do we skip trace and then we reach out. We reach out via SMS. Yeah. And um, and believe it or not, we still do RBMs for for that's for the VAP list. So our internal list, anybody who's opted in for communications and that sort of thing will send out an RVM with the actual uh, uh, description of the property. What platform platform are you using for RVM? Sly Broadcast. Sly Broadcast. I've heard of that. Yeah, it's 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 really good and yeah. it's easy, man. I heard it's good. We don't use it, but I heard it's good. Yeah. So as you're building your buyers list, right, you end up with hundreds and thousands of numbers in there, yeah. and um, and to hit them all via phone, uh, it, it's just it's just more it's a lot easier and more productive, and you start getting phone calls right away. Yeah. So we'll pull we'll pull a list of, of all the buyers that we have in any particular area, right, and then we'll deploy that. We'll 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 import it to slide broadcast do an rvm mm-hmm. and and the the message in rvm rvm what it is it's a ringless voicemail so so um uh it, it's it goes out and then it lands directly on the voicemail of whoever it is that yeah. you know the phone number belongs to right and it doesn't ring it just goes straight to voicemail so what they what happens is people get a notification that hey you have a new a new voicemail they open it up and it's you know it's our team saying oh hey and, and it's very evergreen very you know type of um, it's like middle of the road of, of personal message and evergreen, right? Because we don't do, obviously we won't do name, but we'll do, um, hey, I got another property. It's going to be in, in uh, uh, by Thomas and, and 35th Avenue. I know you bought in that area before. Um, so I want to see if you want to take a look at it. Literally, like it sounds like that. That's the voicemail, right? Yeah. Uh, if you do, let me know. Hit me up. Give me a call back. It's, uh, you know, 480-12345. Yeah, that's good. It's good. So it's very, it's very nonchalant. It's mm-hmm. very, you know, kind of like that. But it sounds like a personal message, yeah. right? So you send it out, and then the, you know, people, you start getting calls right after that, and then we follow up with a text message to the same list. Yeah. So we do a one-two hit. I used to do this one-two hit uh, for sellers mm. um, back in the day, like back in the day being 2018, 2019. Man, or for every thousand um, records that we would hit, we'd get about 250, 300 calls or contacts back. It was crazy. Oh, that's really good. Um, because I was doing the RVM and then the SMS, and then regulation kicked in. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> the party ended. Yeah. So, so anyways, we do that um, still for the buyers. And, and, and in terms of responses, you know, you start getting calls right away. And then the text messages, hey, I tried calling you a little while ago. Uh, I have a property by Thomas and 25th, give me a call back if you want info. Um, yeah. And again, it's very, you know, semi-personal, kind of like yeah. that. Texting is great for uh, for Dismo, yeah. 100%. And, and again, like all these people, like the, the buyers list that we hit, like they, they opted in at some point. They, they want deals from us. Yeah. They want, yeah. So it's it's uh, it works very well to hit your entire buyers list quick. Yeah, the great thing with, with <clears throat> buyers, if, if you text them with a deal, they're, they're going to be happy to hear from you. Yeah. As long as it's priced right. Yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, you find a buyer uh, through, I mean, and there's multiple, multiple. Our entire dispo process, dude, for, for the marketing on, on any given property is 21 days. That's so, really good. So through a period of 21 days, there's a certain set of tasks that happen. Yeah. Every single day we have something to do. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Uh, through the marketing process until we find a buyer. Yeah. So, and then once, so then once you find a buyer, then you do an assignment? Yep. And then you open escrow. <clears throat> mm, exactly. No, we actually open escrow right right as we get the A to B contract. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we have it under contract. We secure the contract. If it's depending on the type of deal, we'll yeah. you know we'll, we'll secure the uh, the transaction. We'll do memos, whatever we need to do. Yeah. Well, nowadays um, it's so competitive. You have to do a memo. Yeah. It's 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 really. Yeah, man. Tough. It sucks that it's gotten to that, but it is what yeah, it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Exactly. So it's it's 
it is kind of an extensive, well, it is an extensive process. I'm not going to yeah. downplay it. So, like, for some of you guys that are brand new, don't know anything about the business, you're getting into it, you can reach out to us. You know, we can help you with deals. We can help you do the disposition or even, you know, help you walk you through the, the, the process to get a deal locked up if you got someone that's ready to sell. Yeah, 100%. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, you end up doing an assignment. And if you locked up the property for, say, $180,000 and you sold it for $200,000 to a cash buyer because the property is worth two sixty, dollars right? Yeah. Um, you get to pocket that difference between the one eighty. dollars and then the the two hundred that your end buyer paid for, so you just made twenty thousand dollars exactly, that deal. exactly. Um, and you monetize, right? So the, if you're looking at or wondering how the process kind of works, I mean, we just laid it out for you. It's really it's it's really that, right? I mean, there's there's, there's you know things and and you know here and there as we go through the process, but really the framework uh, of of the business it's that. And then as you get busier, right? You do that with one deal. You can manage it. You do that with two deals. You can manage it. Three deals, it starts getting a little trickier and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. So, so when you start scaling, I mean, that's where systems and and processes and, and, and teams and hiring and all that stuff, yeah. you know, gets into it. But if you're a solopreneur and you're jumping into it, do not overcomplicate your life. Yeah. Don't think that you got to have the perfect damn website. Yeah. Don't think that you know the the everything has to be like absolutely on point uh, because it's really it's, like it's rough around the edges. Like yeah. shit, I've been in the business since 2009, bro. Like yeah. it's still rough. It's still tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting. A lot of people uh, teach that you should try to find buyers first, which I think it's a waste of time. Like, just focus on on getting a deal with a seller. Yeah. If you got a good deal, you're gonna sell it. Right, you're gonna sell it. Um, because there's people teach like, oh yeah, put up put up uh, bandit signs, say you have a property for sale. You know, and it's not real; it's the, fake. The but whole, the, whole, the whole reverse whole reverse wholesaling, yeah. <clears throat> which is to me, it's a total waste of time. Um, I, I agree with that. I think uh, worst case scenario, if you have a deal, right, you found somebody like when you think of it, uh, you having a deal that's sellable is like you have a, a little holy grail right there. People want that stuff. Right. So worst case scenario, you can't find a buyer for it. You JV, meaning that you, you do a joint venture partnership with somebody who has buyers already. So, I mean, there's plenty of people in your market that have a solid buyer's list. If you go to those people, I mean, in this market, us, I mean, we JV with yeah, people all exactly, the time. Exactly, all the time. Um, and we're looking at a JV deal. We're talking about a JV deal right now before we walked into this podcast between you and me. Yeah, you have a, yeah. you may have a buyer for a deal that I have. Exactly. And actually, so, I'm going to be uh, doing uh, JV deals with a um, guy that you got helped start in the business, Tadeo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tadeo, Tadeo actually, we went. Tadeo's killing it, man. Yeah, Shout out to Tadeo. Yeah. He's done like 50 flips since yeah. he started. Yeah. You know, and I think he does it like part time. Yeah. But he's killing it. He's and yeah, he invited me to Nobu. They had the 30 year uh, anniversary. Yeah. And Nobu here in Scottsdale. I, w- I met Chef uh, Nobu. That was very cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, he invited me and uh, he was telling me that how you, you helped me get into the business, et cetera. And just he was just really grateful for you. I thought that was kind of cool. So just yeah. wanted to mention that. that was no, cool. it was a it was a it was a good uh, a good. Uh, it's, it's funny because him and I, I mean, we. We, we went to the same high school. We didn't hang out. He was a couple grades uh, below me. Um, so it was, I think I was a junior. He was a freshman. Oh, wow. Um, and um, so, but we had, we knew some people in the same crowds. And yeah, he said you guys were in the same town and everything. Yeah, yeah same town, right. same high school. And and um, he, I was speaking at an event in, in, in Scottsdale. Hmm. And uh, and I got off stage and he came up and was like, hey, man, what's up? Do you remember? I was like, yeah, what's up, dude? So, I mean, it just yeah, know, came right crazy. back. Uh, so he started talking about, you know, you know, wanting to get into wholesale and whatnot. Anyways, I did a couple of things. And then we I told him, like, bro, I'm going to hook you up. Let's go to the lobby. Yeah. So I, I took him. Uh, you know, we had a, a good, long conversation in the lobby, gave him a full breakdown. Yeah, he spoke really highly of you. Yeah, him, he was really great. Hooked him up yeah. with contracts yeah. and next yeah, steps. He, he and, told me, yeah, man, he, referred, he bro, really helped me in the business. The, the beautiful thing about that yeah. is that he took it and ran, man. Like he actually like he did something. Yeah. He applied the, the, 50, the time that I spent. 50 flips. That's a lot of flips. Yeah. Yeah, dude, he started doing good stuff yeah, like right out of the yeah, gate. So, yeah. so really cool. Really yeah, he's cool a hustler, story. though. He's a hustler. Oh yeah, he yeah. works. He works. Shout out, man. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's it's again go, going back to it, right? You know, worst case scenario, you don't have a buyer for it. JB with somebody else. Yeah, you're gonna be able to move that deal. Focus on distressed sellers. Focus on having those conversations. Focus on actually making offers. Make offers. That's the one. You know, it's one of the things that we can actually control. How many offers did you make today? Yeah. Um, the more offers you make, the more deals you're gonna yeah. you're gonna get. Well, no, they weren't ready for the offer. It's like, fuck, just make the offer. Yeah, <laughs> you have to because a lot of times you think like, oh man, I'm lowballing, and they're like, well, can you do five thousand more? And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So like the the guys that don't get deals. 
are the ones that are afraid to make offers. Yeah, make offers. Make offers. Count the offers that you make. You have control over that. You may not have that much control over the contracts that come back, but you can definitely control the amount of contracts yeah. that go out. Right? Yeah. So make offers. Um, with that being said, man, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good uh, overview, right, of, of the wholesaling process, how to get, how to, get to your first deal. Um, and of course, I mean, there's, there's intricacies to, to things as they go, but don't overcomplicate it, like, like you said. Uh, the the biggest take, thing is when, when people, the two mistakes people make is they don't target motivated data and they overthink it. Right. Like, that's it. <clears throat> Just make sure it's, it's motivated data and you don't overthink it. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Love it. Um, Vic, if somebody wants to get hold of you and then maybe pick your brain, JV, bring your deals. Best way to reach me is uh, at, on IG, Vic.Heredia, H-E-R-E-D-I-A. Send me a message there. It's like, hey, Vic, I got a deal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we'll go from there. It's pretty easy. I, I, I try to get back to everybody. Um, that's the best way because if you email me, I might miss stuff. Um, that's the best way. So that's what happens when I email you. Correct. Yeah. Now I know. Now I know. <laughs> all right fam uh, i hope you guys like the podcast um follow me if you're not doing uh, so at rafael cortez ceo i'm pretty responsible on social media as well I post content on how to do real estate wholesaling on mindset and all that stuff all the time uh do us a favor if you like the podcast that we're putting together for you guys let us know all right this is a two-way street two-way conversation um drop your questions if there's something that you want us to dig into we can address it in future episodes uh let us know i mean we this is this is for you guys at the end of the day right we're trying to do something um that uh i feel like at the end of the day it becomes a responsibility it's kind of like when you find something really good and you want to share it with the people yeah, around you exactly uh it, it's like hey hey try this man try well this. the reality so is is like i learned it from <clears throat> from many people yeah. You know, you learn, I mean, we, we learn from somewhere else, right? You, right. You, you never gather information by yourself. Right. Uh, you learn it from someone else. It's, it's really interesting. Um, and we could end on this note. Um, Gordon Ramsay, you know, he's a master chef, right? He, you know, he did an interview and it's really cool because he's talking about, like, for him, it was just, he was just gathering intel, gathering intel. And I posted on my IG because I thought it was so cool. He was just just gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge. And, and he it was adding that up to his, his um, his toolbox, finding that's how what got him to such a high level yeah. um, in, in in the sh the restaurant business because <clears throat> he kept adding knowledge to his his toolbox and so that's the key you want to just the more the more you know the more you're gonna make right learn and deploy learn and deploy exactly all right fam so with that being said we'll catch you guys on the next one and until then stay focused you got this let's go see you guys.